morning. It's always good to be home again. <clears throat> the title of today's message is Standing in Grace. Please recognize that uh, the antithesis of standing is sitting, cowering, hidden, and bowed. Today I'm going to ask and invite you to choose standing. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, how amazed and how grateful we are for your goodness, your mercy, and your amazing grace. You have given us, O oh God, a choice every day that we might live and stand in you. Help us, O oh Lord, to make that choice. In Jesus' great big name, amen. Okay, um, many years ago, back in the 90s, toward the end of the 90s, I had a gospel group uh, called David North and the Gospel Celebration, and we, we, all the members of the group were members here at MCCDC, but we, we got together, we, I wrote a bunch of music, and we ended up doing some touring around the country. We sang around, and we made a CD of 10 original, what I called, uh, gospel out music, out gospel. And so there were 10 original songs, and one of the songs on the CD is a song that is based on this Romans chapter 5 passage. Uh, we are justified by faith. And so, Brian, would you hit that? I want y'all to hear that song. What the 
Shirley Clay. Come on, what you are. Come on. It's not natural to try to be all right. something that you're not. Come on. Because God knows who you are. Come on. I said, how you are. I said, what you Say are. Right. It's not natural to try to be her. It's not natural to try to be who. It's not natural to try to be something that you're not. So fun laying those tracks in studio. That was so fun. Had some great singers: Shirley Clay, uh, Frida Walton, Frida Rinks Walton, uh, Virgil Knight on bass guitar, Jeannie Broderick on drums, Yanina Saika on keyboards, doing the. <laughs> but uh, so that message of that song is really important because we need to know that we have the option, my sisters and brothers, we have the option to choose to walk by faith, to stand in grace. The song that y'all sang a little while ago uh, uses, had the word let in it. Let the, what was the song? Y'all sang earlier. Let the church say amen. The word let implies choice. Let it happen means I have the prerogative to not let it happen. And I want us to be fully aware that we, as, as human beings, we have a couple of things that we all have in common. Sentience, self-awareness, and free will. They are, are the bane of humanity and they are the blessing of humanity. Sentience and free will but the problem, the bane with those things is that when you've got free will, you've got choices. My sisters and brothers, every day, you and I are inundated with what I call a tsunami of choices. <laughs> really, every minute, you and I are making choices. And unfortunately, some of those choices that we make are wonderful, <laughs> great, Man, that was a good choice. But there are many, many times that we make bad choices. Choices that impact not only us and our little world, but choices that impact others. In personal, individual, local ways, and then dependent upon our station in life, our choices, the choices from what you and I make, from the choices in the White House, from the choices internationally on global levels, impact everybody else. So, if we make bad choices, how come we blame God all the time? You know, you, come on, let me think about it. We're the ones making good and bad choices, and we pat ourselves on the back about how all oh, these are great, but when we make bad choices, and then we end up suffering the consequences of those bad choices, not only personally, but when they impact other people, why did God let that happen? How is it that God would allow those things to come to be in this world? Come on, y'all, that ain't right. But how many of us know people that don't want to have anything to do with church, don't want to have anything to do with religion, don't want to have anything to do with faith and walk a spiritual walk because they're mad at God and mad at church? Well, I mean, 
I don't blame him for being mad at church because church is some of the full of the most most hypocrites you ever saw. You know, I mean, come on. I mean, I'm just saying. You know, I mean, but but then I, whenever I I face the reality that so many of us in here are hypocrites. I, come on, I just own that. I just own that. I don't, I don't mince words. I plain accept that. But the, the joy is that this is the, place, the best place for us. Because where else are we going to get redemption and salvation? If I ain't got my act together, and I'm not walking the way I walk or talk the way I need to be talking, isn't it in the word and in the fellowship of others that we can try to get it right? Because folk think that they can, oh, I can fix myself. I can heal myself. I can redeem myself. I can get it together all by myself. The scripture today is proclaiming to you and I that we need God. We need God's grace. And that we, in walking in God's grace and in, God, in that faith, we can choose Thine the glory. We can choose faith. Now, faith, I'd offer to you in my simplistic definition, is choosing to trust and believe God. Faith. And so when this song justified by faith, that means that if I if I choose to trust God. If I choose to believe that God loves me, the songs that y'all we were just singing a while ago, if I choose to believe that, then I'm not going to be trying to pass the blame off on everybody else and God. I'm going to own that God has made the way and provided and empowered. One of the things I love to say over and over again is that God is our source and our resource for redemption, for healing, and for joy and for peace. How many of us want peace in our life? How many of us want hope in our lives? How many of us need it? And so if we think, if we delude ourselves into choosing to think that I can get hope on my own, I can find it myself, then I am calling God a liar. Basically, that's what I'm doing. Because I'm going to say, oh, I can find peace. I can get together with all my friends and we can hold hands and sing Kumbaya. And we're going to all be all right. But we need the source and resource in God who is our Prince of Peace. Our peace in the midst of our storms. So, In today's passage, the Romans passage, this is really messed up, y'all. I need to say this, right? I must, come on, I, 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 this is really, really, really messed up because we got we to gotta deal with the, with the sequence that is presented to us in this text. The Apostle Paul wrote, therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace. In this we stand. I talked about that already. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, here we go, y'all. Buckle your seatbelts. We also boast in our sufferings. That's messed up. Anybody here want to suffer? If you said yes, you just a lie. <laughs> just a lie. I don't know nobody that wants to suffer unless they got a martyr complex. Huh? <laughs> I remember when I was little, I actually had, I was so disgusting when I was a kid, I had a martyr complex. Lord, I want to die for you, Jesus. Waiting for somebody to come kill me in Jesus' name, right? Come on, kid, get a life. <laughs> but uh, he says in our suffering, but here comes the sequence, knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces 
character. Oh, shut up. <laughs> oh, and character produces hope. Oh, it's starting to get good. Now, that preach itself on it. That'll preach all by itself. Ow! And hope does not, I had to get my snap in there, does not disappoint us. Mm. Because God's love, we always singing, huh? Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Ghost. It says Holy Spirit there, but that's the Holy Ghost that has been given to us. I need to share a little bit of a testimony from. In 1982, I uh, had uh, already graduated from. Um, I, I'm I'm a, I'm the fifth of six, six children. Um, I was and uh, my brothers and sisters. Uh, and my, fa my mom and dad, my father was a Sunday school superintendent and a deacon at the ch ba our little Baptist church in our little small town in southern Illinois. And my mama was a, the in intermediate teacher <laughs> of Sunday school, inter intermediate grade class. And so, so I grew, we grew up, open, my father was the church custodian too. So he, we opened the door to church and we locked it whenever. <laughs> so, so the six of us was in and out. And of my siblings... I'm the one that went the farthest in, in education. I got my bachelor's in physics in, uh, in, 80, uh, in, 90, in 77 and my master's of uh, environmental studies in 1980. 1982, got my master's of divinity in, in uh, Colgate, Rochester. And I came here to Washington and uh, got called to be the pastor of Antioch Baptist Church in Deanwood, which is a thousand member congregation. So my parents were really, 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 really proud of me because I had accomplished God. I was an overachiever. I was, yeah. So, but my dad, this is Father's Day. My dad had an eighth grade education. He had been 30 years as a foundry worker. And so my dad was like really, really proud of me. And so he would, my, my family said they, he bragged about me everywhere he went because my son is a pastor of a thousand member congregation in Washington, D.C. And, and, and he got his doctor's degrees. And, you know, he was really, really, really proud of me. Well, in 91, when I became HIV positive, uh, the world started to fall apart. My wife got up in front of her, because I was married with three kids at the time. I was living on the down low. I was living on the down low. And my wife got up and said, Reverend North's got AIDS. And I had lied to her and told her I got it from a prostitute. I, I was too scared to tell her I was gay. Um, you know, but I, I'd rather lie. You know, the choices we make. Huh? I was making stupid choices. Stupid choices. But I lied to her and said, I, I, went, I went to a convention in New York and got it from a prostitute. Come on, please. You know, but she believed it, so she got up in front of the church and told them, Reverend North's got AIDS and he got it from a prostitute. So in 1991, July of 1991, I resigned from my church, moved in with David York. You have led me down the path of perdition, you big old Mary. <laughs> <laughs> but it took a whole year, 1992, before I, I realized that I needed to love me because God made me this way. I learned, I learned coming, because that was when we started coming to MCCDC. I, I really got to, I have to share this. We, we said, I had lived all my life in church, and I needed to be in church, and I knew church was where healing and hope and empowerment could come from. So we found MCC in the, in the paper or wherever we found it. And so David and I sat in the back, in the back. You remember, CC? We, we, we sat in the back, and I was in emotional fetal position. Come on, really. I was, I was so messed up from the rejection and the fear and the year, you know. So we, Craig, remember? <laughs> Craig, Craig was there. And... Uh, Larry Urig and, and Candace were just preaching words that God loves you. God made you. You are, you are God's child. You know, you have hope. And, and he actually 
let me start preaching. He knew that I, he knew my story, and he would sometimes have me preach, and we formed the gospel choir back then in, 90, in, 91, in 91, 92, and we started the gospel choir. I had like, oh, you'll love this. I had one soprano, two altos, and seven basses. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and four of them, of whichever group, were atonal. <laughs> you know, but God... <laughs> God takes your little bit and makes it into what God wants it to be, you know? And you just stay faithful of a few things. Shut up. Okay, all right. <laughs> and I've, I realized in 92 that I needed to come out. So I came, I, wa I told David, I'm not going to come out to my family. I need them to know. David says, don't do it. <laughs> don't do it. But I got to. They raised me to tell the truth and they raised me to be honest and, and to be open and to share. And so David said, don't do it. <laughs> don't. I did it. I did it. My family must, like a hand grenade. Some of y'all know what that is like. Some of y'all know that story, you know, in your family when you do it. And back then, and being HIV positive and it was already a death sentence, Come on, the, the, the only thing out was AZT back then, right? Yeah. I mean, that was it. And so you don't even know how long you got to live back then. So uh, my dad was absolutely devastated because I had been, and all of a sudden, all of it gone, all of it. In uh, early 97, he contracted congestive heart failure and uh, was diagnosed to be terminal. And so he was in the hospital. And so I went home back to Illinois. He was in a hospital in St. Louis. I went to visit him. And I come into the hospital room and he's laying there. And he says, I don't want to see you anymore. Don't ever come back. I don't want to have anything to do with you. I don't want to see you. Um, until you go back to your wife and children. Unless you go back to your wife and children, I don't want to, I don't want you to, I don't want to see you anymore. And I, I walked out, I walked out, and, you know, I, I didn't know what to say. What could I say? There's no words, right? And uh, then he, he died. So the last words he said to me, I don't want to see you again. And so at the funeral, my sister um, said to me, she said, David, you need to understand that Pop was so proud of you and he loved you so much. And you just need, I need you to know that. And then the, you know, the spirit the Spirit has a way of, of helping us to do paradigm shifts. Huh? To think in ways that maybe we wouldn't have thought before. Right? The Spirit does that. I, I, I want to give credit where credit is due. The Holy Ghost will take our sufferings, our messes that we've made, the calamities and catastrophes that happen in our lives. Because so, it's not about if they're going to happen. It's always about when they're going to happen, right? Because there's no point in you and I being naive to delude ourselves to think that things are always going to be sweet and wonderful and rosy and... And, and, you know, come on. We know that that's not true. That many folk get dealt a bad hand of cards. Come on, that just happens. Right? And so when that happens, having, standing in grace and choosing faith allows the Holy Ghost to 
empower us to reframe the messes that happen. My sister telling me that he loved me so much, my dad loving me so much, the spirit spoke to me and said, he loved, my dad loved me so much that he said that as a last resort. Think about it. People, when they say what they say to us, they're saying it from their frame of reference. Think about it. From their worldview, from their faith perspective, if that is what he believed with all his heart, he believed that if he said something extreme to me, that maybe I would hear him because he loved me so much. Wow, I'm not heartbroken anymore. It's no longer rejection. It's the extremity of love. It is a demonstration and a manifestation of grace. What if each one of us, what, think about it. it. Remember, we're talking about we have choices. What if it, when, oh, excuse me, um, um, what, what happens we have you with God's spirit walking with you through you and in you you have the prerogative to not sit in it but stand and walk out of it. Yes, you can. You can choose to walk by faith and stand in grace. When those folks start to talk about they're mad at God and mad at church, it's because from their point of view, from their frame of reference, from their worldview, they've been dealt a bad hand and they don't know how to get out of it. We invite them to know that God is to be believed that the word of God is true and that you can stand and that God's spirit can empower you to not only survive, but overcome and be victorious until the next mess comes. Right? I'm, I'm just, come on. Because, because you know, come on. I heard an old preacher say that we're either just came out of a mess, we're in a mess, or we're heading into a mess. Huh? Since that's the case, and that is the nature of life, our choices of how we frame and reframe and interpret and process it is up to us choosing to let God reign. Because when God is allowed to reign, okay, God can certainly reign. I mean, if God was that kind of a God, God could say, praying only you're going to just do everything I say. Then everything is God's fault then. But no, God created us with free will. So, as I come to a close, choose life. Choose faith. Choose it. Recognize the intentionality of your walk. Every day, when, when the tsunami of choices comes, because they, they never stop. I mean, what way am I going to brush my hair today? Am I going to go out the door and not brush my teeth? 
Okay, then that's why you got dental problems. Because each day, each day, choose. I just got to end with this song. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise. For it was grace that bought my liberty. I never know just why Christ came to love me so. He looked beyond my faults and saw my needs. Amazing grace shall always be my song of praise for it was his grace that bought my liberty I do not know just why he came to love me so he looked beyond all my faults, oh Lord have mercy, and saw my needs. I shall forever lift my eyes to Calvary to view the cross. Where Jesus died for me. How marvelous the grace that caught my fallen soul. He looked, he looked. He looked, she looked <laughs> beyond my faults and saw my needs.